All right, good morning, good night, good afternoon. I'm gonna try to make sure that this video is not too long. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into how to actually build a laptop and where to get the laptop from. All right, so just real quick, if you wanna get a laptop, right, it doesn't need to be a brand new laptop. Actually, I would encourage you, especially if you're new to IT, don't go off and go buy no $1,000, three, two, three thousand dollar laptop and you're just getting started, right? So Apple has refurbished products, Dell, every manufacturer has refurbished products that they sell. Even let's check System76, see if they have refurbished. So they do have refurbished, but it's only like a hundred dollars off. I mean, that's, that's nothing. That's like a waste of time. Um, but this is just specials. So you can go to Amazon and this is all us based. So every country has their own, you know, place where you can get laptops from, but you know, I five laptops are generally, you know, good to go. Right. Now, anything less than a 15 inch laptop is going to be a small monitor, small screen, unless you got a little tiny baby hands. Uh, I mean, it, it can be difficult to look at the screen on a daily basis. It can be straining to the eyes. So I would say a 15 inch monitor is probably the smallest size that you want to get. If you can afford to get a 17 inch or you find a, a, a great deal on a six to 16 or 17 inch laptop, then go for that. Right. But 15 don't go less than that, especially if you're going to be doing engineering uh, type of learning or certification, etc. It's just too small of a laptop. You staring at the screen for hours at a time. All right. So also the processor is critical, right? So you don't want to get something less than an i5 or equivalent AMD processor. Uh, so i5 is like minimum. You can work on an i3, but it's going to be slow. So an i5 i7 i9 but the price goes up and up and up the higher the, the type of processor that you get um same thing with amd so you know i think it's fairly reasonable to try to get a i5 style processor so this is amazon's website let's see and if you look you generally can find between 250 230 on up to about 500. Let's just bring this price way down to maybe $400. Click on go. And these are Celerons. Do not ever use a Celeron. Don't ever buy a laptop with Celeron. It's way too slow, right? All right, so you have the i5 here. And you have places that sell business laptops used, like computer stores, you know, so if you can get a business laptop that's used, that's an i5 or i7 or, or something like that, that's a great option. Now, keep this in mind. Try to get an aluminum case laptop that's going to last you some time that, that doesn't have that flex and bend in it. And you're usually going to be good to go. You can always go directly and buy RAM, right? Like say 16 gigabytes of crucial memory, right? So memory is always going to be cheaper. Uh, it's bringing up laptops. Let's just put 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't know what's going on with Amazon's filtering. Normally it comes up. Yeah, let's do DDR. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, as you can see here, right? So 16 gigs, 39 bucks. So it's always going to be way more expensive buying a laptop with the amount of RAM in it than it is to just buy a laptop, buy a laptop with like four or eight gigs of RAM, which is going to be cheap for the laptop. It's going to probably make the laptop two, 200 something, 300 something dollars. Then you go ahead and buy the RAM. You can always swap out the hard drive. That's what I've always done. I've never bought laptops with all of the RAM already there because then you're literally just wasting money and spending four or $500 more than you need to when you could just, you know, pop the case open and add the RAM in yourself or swipe the uh, hard drive. Well, if it's a solid state, if it is a hard drive, if it's old, it may be a hard drive, but usually they have a connector for a solid state. And you could just swap that out. Some newer models may have NVMe. So 
you know, just swap out the hardware yourself, save yourself some money and some time. All right. So once you do that, you have the laptop and I'm going to drop this uh, listing in here for Migration King that basically and I'm going to be changing the domain name over. So this is going to change to Shay's Tech Search, but I'm leaving it. But it's, it's here for now. Anyway, so if you want to get a Linux branded laptop, you know, the list is here. Uh, this Clevo has, you know, branded laptop shipped directly to you. No problem. The speakers are horrible. So you would have to probably change the speakers out if you wanted robust speakers because their speakers are terrible. But you can actually configure. So this is the 17 inch. This is what I was saying about the 17 inch. So for example, let's just do a 15 inch. But I actually purchased this 17 inch. It's massive. The screen is beautiful. It's wonderful. Uh, and the way that you save money is by not configuring a bunch of stuff, right? So you can go in and you can pick your i5, which is what it comes with. Pick no memory. You can do that yourself. You don't need to pay anybody for memory, right? Okay, so you see here, 16 gig is 90 bucks, but you can get it yourself for about 30 bucks. So save yourself $40. It all adds up. Don't put any OS, but if you want, just, you know, have them put the OS there. But if you don't, you don't put no memory there, I don't put the OS. But anyway, so um, SSD, you know, just, just take what they give you. You can always swap this out. Additional storage, no, of course. Uh, full disk encryption, this is if you want them to install everything. Uh, you don't want them to install any software for you. You know, all, all of these different options you can do yourself. You don't need to pay for anybody to do that for you. The only thing that you, you know, would be a headache is, you know, the DVD burner or Blu-ray. You know, you want to make sure that they put the Wi-Fi, but you can purchase a Wi-Fi uh, device, but just let them put the Wi-Fi there. You don't... I mean, don't be ridiculous, right? Um, if there's any problem, don't put any brand in because then it's yours. Arctic paste. I always put the extra grizzly conductor knot, you know, is better. Um, so you can, you're fine with the Arctic, but I always put the grizzly. Just a higher state. Pick your plug, purchase it. Don't buy this webcam cover. Go to the store and get it yourself. They'll literally send you a little piece of plastic that's like hanging off <laughs> It's cheap as hell, you know, so don't don't use their stuff. Right. Um, <clears throat> so they don't come with the, the slide. In, in uh inside the hardware. All right. So that's just Clevo. Right. But there's a lot of different options. So if you want to get Mac used, there's a list here. Uh, Mac for trades is really good. Back market is really good and reputable. Chromebooks. I don't even want to go there. But the thing is, unless you get an i5 or i7 Chromebook, do not even think about using it. I mean, they do have a Linux VM that you can use that's Debian based, but it's customized. So you'd have to end up, you know, tweaking libraries and things like that to get it to work correctly. So while it does work, I have used it. I really, after some time and when I started, you know, using Docker and training with Kubernetes and stuff like that, I got rid of it. You know, I gave it to the kids because it was just... It, it, it was it was getting on my nerves. It was everything was slow. You know, it it wasn't worth it. So it's not for DevOps, cloud engineering, Linux kind of work. It's you, no, get a regular laptop, right? So anyway, all right. So that's that. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. Oh, another thing, real quick. So when you have virtual machines on your laptop, you can use Vagrant to bring stuff up and down. It's a lot faster than sitting there building. Or snapshot cloning, you can just do Vagrant up and roll out a brand new VM, Vagrant destroy, and then it you know wipes it out. So, but I'm not going to get into Vagrant right now. All right, so let's just go back. I'm trying to toggle between screens. So let's go ahead and launch VirtualBox. Um, let's just say Ubuntu desktop. Uh, DevOps, right? I already downloaded the ISOs ahead of time. We're going to go ahead and skip the unattended installation. Go ahead and bump the RAM up. Uh, where's my 1024 times 8? So I had to use my calculator here. So that's, I'm just going to put 8 gigs to it, add two CPUs, uh, leave it at 20, pre allocate the size. Let me let me check how much space I got free on this machine. All 
All right, so I got 15 gigs free and I got plenty of storage space. Let me go ahead and just get rid of that. All right, so <clears throat> that's going to go ahead and kick off that. Now, there's customizations you can do, but I'm not going to sit there mess with this. So what I'm trying to simulate is like if you were installing this on hardware, right? So you don't need a Windows or a Mac laptop to do any kind of DevOps, cloud engineer, Linux system engineer. You do not need Windows and you do not need Mac, right? So with Windows, you generally want some productivity software like, like Microsoft Office or something like that. We can use only Office. You do not need to use uh, Microsoft Office. I mean, it, it has a DocX format, et cetera, so you don't need it. I don't use it. I only use it at work because I'm forced to. All right. Minimal installation. Do your third-party graphics and Wi-Fi. You don't want to sit there playing. And see, this is the thing. Some people say, oh, why don't you use Kali or uh, use CentOS or Rocket? Well, first of all, CentOS is end of life. January of 2024 of this year, five months from now. So it makes no sense using it whatsoever. Um, and it doesn't have a, you know, they IBM then did some funky stuff. So don't even bother with CentOS, right? Uh, Fedora can be a little bit of a pain configuring the setting up. Once it's set up and running, it's, you're good. But I want stuff to be easy. And you don't want to sit there tinkering with stuff when you're trying to learn and do your labs and do your AWS stuff and do your Google Cloud Plus, whatever platform you're playing with. So you don't want to sit there playing with that stuff. You know what I mean? So for me personally, I just want to get to work, right? Download the stuff. I mean, years ago, I used to sit there playing with the, you know, dev packages or the RPM packages, depending on the platform. But at this time and age now, I say, when you want to work, <laughs> you don't want to be playing with stuff, right? You won't be sitting there taking hours and hours tinkering your, with your laptop. Just get it set up and running and, and, and jump straight in, you know? So Linux is perfect for that. The biggest thing with Linux is that you don't have to pay for a lot of stuff, right? So with the Windows operating system, you got the license for the OS, you have the license for the Office software, you have license for this, 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 you want this software, you have to pay for this, pay for that, the virus software, this, this, this. I mean, it's just, it, it just becomes like nonstop. <clears throat> All right. Logical volume manager. If the, if you're putting this on the laptop, bare metal, put the encryption and security, right? Do, 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 do. Well, well. Okay. You can enable a recovery key. And then you can put the recovery key there, overwrite empty space. You know, I'm not going to mess with that because it's going to make the install take longer. And just don't do <laughs> like I've done many times. You put the password in and you forget it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've done that where you're so busy running through the install, you put the password and you literally forget what the password is. So if you do that, <laughs> then you're sitting there trying to, if you don't, if you don't want to rebuild the box, then you're sitting there trying to, you know, uh, reset it, you know, just use something that, you know, <laughs> I've done that a lot. I hope I didn't do it this time. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Video man. Let's say, uh, purple. No, let's say blue video i got a new keyboard that's driving me bananas all right do, 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 do. all right active directory please don't do that for your laptop i mean unless you're in a work environment you know that's a whole nother scenario but if you're just doing it for your environment even if you have an active directory that you set up in your own environment don't do that just don't create a headache for yourself. Don't make things difficult for yourself. All right. <clears throat> um, because I put two CPUs and eight gigs of RAM, it's probably going to pop through fairly quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to pause it and let it finish. And then I'll go back. All right. So we're back. And as you can see, it went ahead and finished. Right, let me turn the light back on. I swear this this spotlight so you can see is like sunshine. 
thing is bright. All right, so. All right, it's going to go ahead and reboot. <clears throat> and then. All right, once it comes back up. So the main thing when you install in your DevOps cloud engineer Linux based OS, right? So now this is our encryption. Do, do, do. I got this mic in my way. All right, so when you come back up, um, you're going to come up to an encryption page. So let's take a look at that. And this is when you boot into your laptop brand new. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So when you first get logged in, don't just start customizing, right? A lot of people start messing around with customization and getting stuff customized. Just install everything that you need to install first. And then after you install everything, then you can go start tweaking stuff and messing with stuff after that. All right. So just go ahead and skip here. You can enable pro. They have a certain amount of like five that you can use, but let's just skip it for now. Just for us to quit. All right. First thing we will need is terminal. All right. And... So we did the minimal desktop. So you see Firefox is not here. All right. But you still have access. All right. So obviously you still have access to the internet. So you can pull down everything that you need from the command line. Right. Um, <clears throat> so when you're getting started, you want to install the stuff that you need to actually work. Right. So don't start with Chrome and stuff like that, right? Uh, all right, so let me just pull up the list that we're going to use here. All right, sudo app. You want to update everything. Pipe it through sudo app get upgrade. Having this mic in front of the keyboard is a little bit nerve wracking. All right, so go ahead and update everything <clears throat> to update the latest packages, etc. So this is what we're going to be doing. And you do not need Microsoft Office. You don't, right? So, you know, this is only Office. And you see it has a spreadsheet, it has, you know, presentation, it has form templates if you want to, you know, create forms and stuff like that. Excuse me. So this is like a PowerPoint uh, clone. This is a, a spreadsheet clone, like an Excel clone. This is a Word clone. So, you know, you don't really need, and you see the ribbon is very familiar to Microsoft Office, et cetera. So I don't like LibreOffice. It's just funky to me. Uh, and a lot of times the configs kind of break and, you know, you bring a docx file over and it just goes haywire, but I've never had a problem with a document coming over a docx or an Excel file or PowerPoint coming over into only office. The formatting is, is parity. So, you know, I, I use only office. All right. So when you first get this, uh, set up, you know, one of the first things you want to install, get set up, do the updates, do Git, do VS code editor. If you use it. Use uh, install Docker, uh, Docker Compose, you know, Kubernetes tools, Ansible, Meld. Meld is a comparison tool, a file comparison tool. So you can see the differences between, a, 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 you know, two files. Only Office, get Only Office set up and running, uh, get a VPN set up. Because if you're going to, if you leave the house, 
you want to make sure you got a VPN. You don't want to be connected to public Wi-Fi. You don't have no way to isolate your traffic. So get a VPN, also download, configure, and set up a, a, a firewall, right? Install Terraform, Kubernetes tools, Termios, or some kind of terminal emulator. Termios is actually really, really good, and everything's encrypted, right? So it's, it's a good tool to use, or you can use uh, Terminator or some, some kind of terminal-based tool. And then after that, then you can start installing you know, paper, customizing the logos, the icons, the desktop, all the other stuff, all the pretty stuff you can do after you get the laptop mostly set up. Okay. So this is still running here. So let me show you this with Snap, right? While that's going through that. So with Ubuntu, so you can use different operating systems you don't have to use uh you, you do not have to use the ubuntu desktop you can use i wouldn't recommend using centos because centos stream uh centos itself version 7 is going to be end of life on in june of this year and they've ibm's done some funky stuff with centos so if you're going to do anything just use rocky linux if you have to use red hat then use red hat itself you should be able to use up to 16 uh, instances of the server based, uh, operating system for Red Hat. And then they, you know, cut you off and start hitting you with licensing fees and, you know, things like that after that. And inside the portal, I didn't see an easy way to remove a license entitlement. I, I haven't played with it enough recently. So, uh, you might want to be mindful of that, but if you use Rocky Linux, you're good to go. It's, it's, it's a Red Hat clone. It's basically the replacement for CentOS. And I just use Red Hat for, I mean, uh, for Rocky Linux for, for testing purposes. So this is Termius. So this right here is Canonical's Snap environment. People have different feelings about Snap. I really don't care. I just want to use what's easiest to get up and running and do all my testing simulations and labs and stuff like that. So use what's easiest for you. If you just if you want to use a Debian file or a .deb file, if you want to use a tar file, if you want to sit there playing with that, then go ahead and do that. But I don't want to sit there wasting time messing with, you know, dev files and tar files and snap is just easier to use and quicker to get set up and running. It has some drawbacks sometimes when you need to remove stuff, but nothing's perfect, right? Okay. Let's see where we are. All right. So our file here. Okay. So I'm going to drop this file inside of And I don't know if I put input here. Mouse integration. And Bloomberg Manager. Slay, whatever. Okay. All right, so I did not enable the ability to paste by directional. And shared folders. Do, 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 do. All right, there's a way to do it, but I don't feel like messing with it right now. I'm a little bit tired. So let me just go ahead and do it this way. Move the file over. Move the terminal over, terminal window over. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, so you install Git. All right, so that goes. Then you can configure Git. I'm not gonna mess with configuring it right now. So that's just to install Git. So um, then you can check the version of Git. and see what version that you have installed. Okay, once you got that done, clear. All right, so 
uh curl i didn't have that on here but curl is uh you know it's really important for certain networking tools i didn't have that on there but it, it should have been there all right same thing with uh snap for visual studio code All right, so that's going to download that while that's downloading um so this option for come out of the vm let's minimize this a little bit so we've got i probably made it too small for anybody to see so we've got docker here so docker is where you basically have your playground, right? You build everything inside that image, make sure it's gold, and then push it up, right? So anyway, so now let's check and see. Let's go ahead and add that to favorites. And just to move the settings around, let's move the bar here down to the bottom. And all right, let me make this bigger because it's hard to see. Okay. All right. So also your date and time. If you need to fix your date and time, then you want to do that. Kind of jumping around here. All right. So your appearance. Um, actually, I'm going to make it dark real quick because the you know bright light is bugging my eyes. You can change the color scheme if you if you want. Um, also, if you want to move, I got the cell phone in the way. Um, if you want to move the dock around, then you can move it from the left down to the bottom, and then you can actually make it smaller so that you can see a little bit better. All right, background, if you want to, you know, make it a darker background. It's just e a little bit easier on the eyes, you know, personally. All right, so let me come out of here real quick. <clears throat> go back okay all right so docker requires pulling down from some repositories so i'm going to add this in i'm not going to sit here and type this all in right now oh, wait all right so yeah, like I said, I'm gonna drop this into the video. I'm not gonna sit there and type all this in right now uh, because I need to turn on the bi-directional to copy and paste. All right, so Docker Compose, same thing. Uh, so Kubernetes, sudo snap install cube, CTL, classic. And it's gonna be fairly quick for, for that sudo snap install k9s classic uh and then we're going to go ahead and grab ansible we want to have ansible there we already did an update so we don't need to update it now so sudo apt install ansible yes that's going to pull all the packages down that you need for Ansible. Um, and meld is important for comparison between two different tools. So go ahead and just grab meld. And what I do as I, let me move this over. Okay. So I save it as a favorite. Anytime I need something, you know, sometimes I do use the calculator a lot. So I'll save it as a favorite on the desktop. And definitely always make, you know, terminal a favorite because you're going to use terminal all of the time. So just make it a favorite. All right. Once you're done with that, then go ahead and do meld.
But like I said, that's a comparison tool. So for only office, uh, you can go to medium instead of trying to search for it. And wait, wait a minute. Phase tag search is it at. Yeah, you gotta put the at symbol. All right. <clears throat> um, all right, just doing a bunch of baloney. Right, blah, blah, blah. Trying to go in and out the virtual machine is nerve wracking. All right, close that. So you can just basically just go in here. There is a editor that comes with Ubuntu, a text editor. Let's go ahead and grab that, drop that in. And what you can do is run these, okay? So, oh. okay, copy and paste. Go ahead and click yes. All right, and Now, you can copy and paste all at the same time, but just for cleanness. Oops. What did I just hit? All right. Oh. Do, 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 pseudo. Why are you giving me a denial? This is main sources. Just ran you, you bugger. All right, so this is when you have to go to the only office website and download only office <clears throat> for ubuntu download the Debian file they do have a snap from the snap store you can install the snap from the snap store the biggest thing is to make sure the certificates are there right so all right all right so makes it executable Okay, sudo. Let it install. If there's an error, we do a fix missing if there's a library missing or something like that. So we should be good to go, though. Let me just close the browser. And this allows you to do, like, if you need to work inside of a desktop editor, um, especially if you're on a regular laptop. All right. <clears throat> this will fix all the packages that are missing. The different uh, libraries that are missing. What is the name of the freaking thing? All right, so that's only Office, right? Boom. So you got your only Office, you have the spreadsheets, you have your 
PowerPoint, you know, you got your Excel, you got your Word, and that's your Word editor, right? So save it as a favorite. No. No. Okay. So, I don't feel like playing with this. Anyway, so close without saving. Desktop editors. Okay, favorite. Do do do. Let's just do it this way. Go in, right click, add to favorites, and you're done. Meld. Add to favorites. So there you go. That's your file comparison tool. All right. Now, back to our list. Okay. So, uh, same thing with Terraform, Kubernetes, uh, Termius. So, Termius is also on the Snap Store. You can actually go in for development. And so they got Beekeeper here, which is for databases. So this is the thing. When you don't see a blue check mark, then it may not be under active development. It may be old. So just be cautious of installing stuff that's not under active development. And that's, you know, any, any kind of open source tools. You don't want to install stuff that you know, is not under any kind of active development. All right. So this is Termius, a terminal emulator program that's really secure. All right. And that's going to pop up here. Downloads to snap. Now, while that's doing that, let's let's go back and take a look. All right, so if you're, and this is the Snapcraft store, like I said, you can either do the .deb uh, file downloads or the tire files and install them yourself if you really want to go through all of that. Uh, but Snap is just easier. So you can look at the server snaps that are available. And like I said, a check mark, you know, you want to see active development. Same thing like the AWS CLI, uh, the Google Cloud CLI. If you're using DigitalOcean, use their, their CLI. And this is their command line interface tools. Let's see if this is done. All right, so Termius, cute little logo. Add them to favorites. Termius is actually really cool because they're encrypted. Their encryption is off the hook end to end, so they're 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 pretty cool. They do have an option. So once you set up your, and I'm just opening for right now, but once you set up Chrome. If you're a Gmail user, you set up Chrome and then you can single sign on through Chrome, et cetera. And, and then you can do that way. Let's see, let's go back. And, you know, you can use single sign on, which is, of course, you got to pay for that Apple, you know, regular email or Google. So let's go ahead and just close this out real quick. Okay. Now for the AWS CLI, you can just, like I said, grab it from here. You can do uh, sudo apt install AWS CLI and try, and then it'll pop up and say, hey, you need to do this from the snap. Okay. All right. So that's AWS, Google Clouds SDK. There's nothing wrong with installing multiple SDKs on the same machine, it's no problem at all. Same thing with DigitalOcean. And the reason why is because you're not going to be going into the console to, once you get accustomed to the AWS cloud or Google cloud platform, you're not going to be going into the console consistently. You're going to do most of your work from the command line 
And as a learning process, there's some things you need to do in the GUI interface, but for the most part, you can do everything through the command line, especially when you start automating tools with uh, Ansible or, or Terraform, et cetera. When you start to learn the automation tools, you're going to pretty much primarily be in the command line. All right, so we got Docker going here. So the command line interface is what allows you to interface with the cloud provider. Obviously, you have to put, you know, your secure keys and stuff like that. So it's going to be your primary way of, of interacting. Uh, so if you're using Code Cloud or A Cloud Guru, A Cloud Guru, I know Pluralsight is messed with this, and uh, I think it's Cloud Academy. Yeah, Cloud Academy. So they have actual hands-on labs that you can log directly into the cloud service provider, AWS, Google Cloud, et cetera. The thing that's different with Code Cloud versus that theirs is that Code Cloud has playgrounds that are literally set up for not just the cloud providers, Google Cloud, uh, AWS, et cetera. Um, they also have Linux playgrounds. You see Rocket Linux here, Ubuntu, Arch Linux is definitely not for beginners. Arch is not for beginners. Uh, CentOS Stream, I'm not using CentOS. If you're going to use anything, use Rocket Linux, right? Um, so they have Kubernetes playgrounds where you can learn Kubernetes and Helm, Istio, uh, Podman, etc. So Terraform configurations for AWS, HashiCorp Vault, which is definitely used. Um, so they have to play Argo CD, Jenkins, GitLab. So they have playgrounds, Git, that are going Ansible, you know, that you're going to use. And OpenTofu is, uh, is new. OpenTofu is the open source version of Terraform. Um, Pulumi, Puppet, you know, so the, look at this, Golang, you know, different languages, Python, et cetera. So these are playground environments where you can get hands-on with these actual tools inside of a a live playground environment where you ain't got to worry about breaking stuff or destroying your machine. And, you know, so don't, when you're playing with these tools, don't install all that stuff on your machine. Disinstall the core stuff on your laptop. Use a provider like Code Cloud or use VirtualBox to play around. That way you can blow it away and restart. You don't want to have to rebuild your machine if you install something funky and, and, and mess up your box and mess up your laptop. Then you have to, you know, wipe it and start over because you can't figure out why you can't get anything to launch. So last of the Mohicans is obviously VirtualBox, right? So 22.04, it'll download it. So VirtualBox comes with a enhancement package. Where are you? extension packs right all right so you want to have the extension the extension pack for the, the extras right all right so again extension pack you import after you get virtual box actually running so let's clear all right let's go to downloads all right so you see you see, you have the VirtualBox package. Let's go ahead and um, make it executable. Okay, sudo dpkg install VirtualBox. And take a second here. All right, so when you see all these missing dependencies are not installed, then you can go back and history, rep, fix, then go ahead and run what you did before. So to fix the missing libraries and packages that you're missing on the machine, and then you'll be able to roll through and get VirtualBox launched. Okay. All right. So, and this is a nested vm it barks about nested virtualization so i'm not going to sit there going through the troubleshooting with that so basically you want to make sure that your your um 
nested virtualization is on for your CPU for that piece of uh, that, that hardware that you buy for your machine. Just make sure that uh, VTX is on or the equivalent for AMD is turned on so that you can run virtual machines on your uh, uh, laptop, right? Um, so, so this is like trying to run a VM inside of a, you know, yeah, you're trying to, yeah. So anyway, so you're trying to, this is different from if you're using physical hardware, this is nested virtualization anyway. So anyway. That's how you download and install it, but there's more you have to do. But this is nested virtualization, so I'm not going to sit there going through the troubleshooting to, to launch it from there. All right, so if you're using a physical laptop, you're not going to run into all these different errors. So anyway, okay, so that is VirtualBox, and I think we did download VMware also. Okay, let's see, VMware Workstation. You can run VMware Player, but it's like worthless because it's each individual VM. So there's plenty of um, tools online to be able to, uh, you know, how to install. VMware Workstation and stuff like that. You can use Bard, you can use, you know, cloud.claw.ei or, or ChatGPT, or you can just search DigitalOcean. So like DigitalOcean, how to install VMware Workstation on Ubuntu uh, 22.04, pull that article up. Doop, 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 doop. There's so many articles on installing VMware Workstation on Ubuntu. And that's one of the reasons why I pick Ubuntu versus other distributions because, you know, you may find yourself having to do this stuff on your own and then you have to document it, then you save it somewhere so that you can reference it later, you know, but just use something that's common, then you're not, you're not going to have that, that same kind of problem. Uh, so, for example, like Build Essential, you want to make sure that you have Build Essential, you know, so boom, boom, boom. And you want to make sure you got GCC installed on the machine for, for VMware Workstation. Sometimes VMware Workstation can be very noisy, um, depending on what you're installing. So just, just be aware of that. All right, so it's at the latest version. Okay, so let's see if it finished installed. Downloading. Is it down, finished downloading? Yeah, we're, all right, Chamad. All right, so there you go. So now you got the bundle, right? So as you can see here, to tell you to go down, uh, sudo bash and, you know, configure the kernel parameters, et cetera. And these are the different modules to install. Um, the required modules, and then, you know, you install it, right? All right, so let's just go ahead here. Extract the installer. And these, well, these step-by-steps -steps are all over the internet. I've got one on my blog also, so just just so you're aware. And this may bark because it's nested virtualization, so you know, you're trying to run a VM on a VM, so you know a, a virtual environment on a virtual machine. So it may bark. Let's see what it does. All right, so I paused it for a second because it was it was taking a little long. 
All right, so. Doop, 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 doop. Okay. And while that's running, it's going to pop up with the, these ads are crazy. But <laughs> you know, I'm so used to blocking ads. I don't see all this garbage. <laughs> all right. So there we go. Everything's done. Now let's see if we get barked at. Add the favorites. There we go. All right. So like I said, there's a way to reset the licensing. I'm not going to put that here, but just so you're aware, just Google it, reset VMware workstation license on Ubuntu. <laughs> just keep using it, you know, but uh, I guess that would be a license violation or something like that, whatever. So, you know, if you got the money, pay for it. But like all things Linux, you can reset it. All right, create a new virtual machine. Blah, blah, blah. And then, then go through the process of creating a virtual machine. I'm not going to sit there messing with this right now. All right, so this is if you're on your laptop, right? So you want to have virtual machines running. And to be honest, if you want to pay for a license, VMware Workstation is way better than VirtualBox because you can play with the network and there's a lot of stuff you can do with uh, creating uh, networks and stuff like that, that can simulate things really well. So from that standpoint, uh, VMware Workstation is way more powerful than VirtualBox when it comes down to, you know, adding networks, uh, bridge networks, et cetera. I mean, there's just a lot of things, a lot of advancements that you can do for the host of the adapters and stuff like that. So that you, you, you can really do some cool stuff with, uh, with, virtual, with VMware Workstation over VirtualBox. And there's some things you can do in VirtualBox too, but um, for preference wise, you know, I would use VMware Workstation if I wanted to pay for something, but VirtualBox gets the job done too. You know, it really does. All right. So in a nutshell, let's take a look. And that's all the basic stuff to get the laptop up running. Then you install Chrome, right? So then you install Chrome. And Chrome, same deal, is www.google.com, Chrome. And this is for people that are Gmail users or Google users, et cetera. So you can download the package for Chrome. Usually it's fairly fast. Then go to the command line. All right, so you see you got Google Chrome there. I usually, you know, activate it plus X, Google. You don't have to, you can just install it. But anyway, sudo vp kg install Google. Oops. I hope if I type the right password, right? Same thing if this barks didn't do fix missing, but usually Google doesn't bark. Um, they usually do a pretty good job to make sure all the packages are there. All right, so Google Chrome. All right, make it your default. And you're good to go, all right? If you are a Google Chrome user, your extensions will come across as soon as you log in and sync your account and you are good to go. So after that, I mean, you got your Visio Studio, Visio Studio code editor. Um, that's there. You know, you can customize it to your, you know, theme or whatever works for you for your personal usage, and and get rocking and rolling and start using everything. So the main thing I'd say is for your Linux laptop, install all the basic stuff you need, like the AWS CLI, you know, Terminus, you know, or whatever terminal emulator program. Uh, they've got a different one called Terminator where you can have multiple one. I'll, I'll just show you Terminator real quick. All right, so let's go to Snap Graph. And Terminator. Where 
is it? Terminator is, oh, all right. So it's just at the CLI. So let me just install it real quick. So you can, you'll know Terminator by looking at it because it's red. It's a red icon. So let's just see. Pseudo, oh, sorry. Let me move this out of the way. Let me move face out the way. Pseudo apt install Terminator. Yes. And I like Terminator because you can have multiple, you know, windows open and it's it's cool for that. All right. So. And it allows you to kind of split the screen up, right? So you can, you know, split it horizontally, split it vertically. So if you got multiple sessions going, you know, this is kind of like the on premise, like on on OS version of Terminus, right? So Terminus is sync encrypted to the cloud, um, to a cloud instance, or should I say, I'm gonna explain the Terminus bad. So Terminus is where you can share with teams, you can access a host, et cetera. So I'm, I'm not gonna mess with, cause that, that means I gotta set the accounts up on the machine. I'm not, I don't wanna do that on a demo machine. So anyway, so Terminus, so say for example, you got top running here, and you have, um, you know, PS Dax. Let's just, uh, let's just, you running commands here and then down here you're running, um, oh, let's see how much space we got. And, you know, so you can, you can work in the different windows and, and do different operations at the same time, or you can be SSH into one machine, or you're doing Kubernetes in another, or you're working on configuring something from the CLI here in, uh, uh, sorry. My brain is like dead right now. Like, anyway, so you can be working on the AWS CLI from here. You can be working on the Google CLI from a uh, different side. So there's just different things that you can do. And also the S3 command, um, so do I get, install s3 command and this is for managing s3 buckets like s3 storage whatever so anyway um and you can add stuff to the you know all right that's enough for tonight so i'm gonna go ahead and call it a night and that's the basics of everything you need to set up to get a DevOps laptop ready to go. And as you can see, there's no Microsoft Office installed. You don't need it. Uh, you have your virtual machine uh, software that you're gonna use to be able to stand up your virtual machines. Now, the one thing I will say is that you really should look at Vagrant because Vagrant is what allows you to stand up and tear down virtual machines just by running Vagrant up, right? Or Vagrant down. Let's see where you at uh vagrant destroy sorry you know so vagrant up you can bring a machine up quickly vagrant destroy you can destroy the vm and then start over so it's really a cool way to increase the time it takes you to build you don't want to go through with your virtual machines and building a virtual machine every single time so vagrant is awesome for that um so i would recommend if you're going to you know deal with simulation environments or lab and stuff like that use vagrant because it's, it makes things very very fast right all right, so that's it. Um, this ran kind of long. I was trying to keep it to 30 minutes. It ran a little over. So that's it. So I said, I'm going to come the law to the Muslims, to everybody else. Peace, love, take care of yourself. And I'll see you on the next one. Shut it down, baby. It's over. It's time to go to bed.